overcoming backdrop barriers. I'm going to talk beyond like a database upgrade um, about two of the potential problems that you're going to run into, which is with modules and themes. I hope that I'm going to, one, convert a module, a Drupal 7 module, have it working in backdrop, and at least show how I adapted a theme from Drupal 7 to make it work in backdrop. We'll make that full screen. What it would? Yep, I picked that up somewhere. So I am Justin Kaiser. I am officially a Drupal web programmer, although I work with uh, WordPress and Backdrop too. I am. I work for a nonprofit in Muncie, Indiana, called the Academy of Model Aeronautics. I have about twenty-five websites or so to mess around with. Drupal seven, Drupal nine. LMS websites, Backdrop, WordPress. I'm Kaiser JV all over the internet, although apparently not on YouTube because I Googled that in YouTube and I didn't come up as that being my YouTube name. Uh, so the Academy of Model Aeronautics is a nonprofit dedicated to uh, the hobby of flying model airplanes. And I work at the International Air Modeling Center which is a thousand acres of flying sites for our 150,000 members to come fly their planes at. It's kind of a really cool place to work because I go outside and, you know, I get to see stuff like this. Um, and Urcha comes and flies all their helicopters. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. That isn't an everyday occurrence, but it happens more often than not. And then some people, and then sometimes they show up with their jets. Oh wow! And it's it's pretty amazing. So if you were in the previous presentation, you know what Backdrop CMS is. Backdrop is a free and open source content management system that helps you build modern, comprehensive websites for businesses and nonprofits. It is a fork of Drupal. Backdrop is Drupal 7 modernized. It was actually forked in 2013, so it's had nine years of development. Oh, my. Um, I was hoping it was 2015. It was released first in 2015, okay. but it was forked in 2013. That being said, it's not a drop in replacement for Drupal 7. The themes don't upgrade. Backdrop port ports exist for the most popular modules, and there are over a thousand projects in Backdrop Contrib already. However, it is possible that your module may not be there. Also, you have to work with your custom modules. Another difference between Drupal and Backdrop is that blocks are reusable. They use classes and not IDs. And they're not fieldable like Drupal 8 blocks are, Drupal 8 and 9 blocks are. They're just configuration. They're just JSON. And to make up for the lack of fieldable blocks, we just added something called pageless nodes where you can create a content type where they don't actually have a URL that you can visit the node at, but you can display those things with views inside your site like you can blocks in Drupal. But if you're upgrading to Drupal from Drupal 9 from Drupal 7, you still have to solve your theme problem and your module problem and your block problem, actually. So these obstacles are, you're still going to have them, whether you go to Backdrop or Drupal. But there are Backdrop modules that can help. First, if you you have a Drupal 7 site and you're looking to put it in Backdrop, there's a Drupal 7 module called Backdrop Upgrade Status that you install on your site, and it filters through all of the modules that are available for Backdrop, both the ones that are released and the ones that are experimental. And it tells you, hey, this has a release. Hey, this is experimental. No, this doesn't exist. You might have to port it. And it also suggests within the UI, turn this module off. 
before you upgrade a backdrop. Like if you have a Drupal 7 site that uses panels, you want to turn that off before you upgrade it to Drupal to backdrop because the layout system in backdrop is panels, but it's not all of it. And it doesn't it, it doesn't upgrade correctly. Just turn it off. So it will suggest what modules to turn off before you upgrade the database. And there's an important place to look for backdrop modules too, even before you run the upgrade status. On GitHub, this is our contrib. This is where all of our contributed projects live. These are the ones also includes the ones that aren't publicly released. They don't have a release. Like for instance, I ported the S3 file system module. So I can use um, S3 buckets for my files in backdrop. But I haven't released it publicly because I'm afraid of what happens if it breaks. I'm afraid I won't be able to fix it. And I'm not sure all of it works, but it works for me because I'm using it on three sites in production. So you can find modules in here that don't have a public release that will work it, they also might break your site. So. It's a start. Yes. And the ones that are actually available are on backdropcms.org. On the modules page. And there are, a, it's, it's growing every day. We keep adding to these things. There's also a very important backdrop module called Coder Upgrade. Install this on your backdrop site, and it will do it will do automatic automated changes from Drupal 7 to backdrop. It'll change the info file so the module will turn on. It will change all of the. It will try to change the variable gets to config gets. It will try to change everywhere where it says Drupal to where it says, to, so it says backdrop. And sometimes it will make the module work. One of the examples of a module that just works after you install it and run it through Coder Upgrade is something called Views Block Exposed Filter Blocks. I discovered this module because it was installed on a Drupal 9 site that I manage, and this functionality went into Drupal core, so I didn't need the module anymore. And having the module installed on the site in 9.3 actually broke the site. So then I discovered what it does. Um, you can have exposed filters on view pages, but not view blocks, and this module makes that possible. So we are going to play with Coder Upgrade right now. Alright, so here's my backdrop site. And if I go to views, and I go to one that has a block display, I don't have an option for exposing the form here as a block. But I've installed the Coder Upgrade module. And inside my code, that gives me a Coder Upgrade folder inside my Files folder. And there's a new folder and an old folder. So I download the Drupal 7 module and put it in the old folder. Then I go over to UI, go to my configuration, development, coder upgrade, and say, yes, check that box, convert files.
and that created a folder of the backdrop version in the new folder. And it also created a patch that tells me what it changed. It, it changed simple things. It didn't change very much. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to drop it in my modules folder. I'm going to go back to my models page, and it's going to be there for me to turn on. If it ever gets there. Black exposed filter block. And note that it doesn't have a version number there in that column because it's not officially released. Now, my, my Lando's are always kind of slow. But I thought it was important to go through all of that rather than just have it done. Alright, it's on. And if I go back to the view, it's going to be there as an option to um, display the exposed filter as a block. There it is. Right there. Module port it. Now there may be some other details in it that I might want to look at before I would officially release it, but I did already put that in in here. So it's available for anybody to get. And the official release might be happening next week. So that's how simple it can be. But that's not how simple it is all the time. Like, the, the backdrop community spent months and months porting the organic groups module. It was super hard. And, but it's released and it works now. The way entities work are different in backdrop than both Drupal 7 and Drupal 9. Part of the module went into the core, part of it's not in core, in, and different parts of it are in there as opposed to Drupal 7 and Drupal 9, so it, it got super complicated and just peeling it all apart. And I've got other ones that are hard because, what, what, for example, one of my favorite modules is the search and re replace scanner module that I can search through all of my content and do a find and replace. I've tried to port that to backdrop 
but the way it works is it the configuration in the module in Drupal, it cycles through the database table for the field configurations to find out which fields are text fields that it can that so it knows which fields to search through. Well that field doesn't exist in backdrop because the configuration isn't in the database, it's in JSON. So I have to change the code to cycle through the JSON configuration rather than the database table that doesn't exist anymore. And I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> On the themes. When I have moved a, back, a Drupal 7 site to Backdrop, I haven't actually ported the theme. I've just taken a look at where things are in Drupal 7. I've looked at my regions and I've created a sub-theme in Backdrop that sort of matched. And I used, I used the CSS to make all my colors the same and make everything match. Like, this is the Drupal 7 site when the home page loads. That's the backdrop site. So we've got a region at the top with three things, the social media icons, the AMA logo, and the search the search button and then two sections underneath it, the site logo and the menu, and then one giant section um, with two things in it, with two blocks in it, and then three columns, two columns, and then this is also three columns across, and the footer is just one gigantic column. And the Drupal 7 version is essentially the same thing. It looks slightly different because I think my fonts are different. So as easy as the module upgrade could be, we have automated sub-themes too. There was talk yesterday during the unconference about the Drupal 10 uh, sub-theme kit. We have, a, uh, we have a contrib module called Devel Sub-Themer. And you can also, which you can install, and it will create sub-themes. I'm going to install that module, which this will show off. One of the backdrop items is that when you, act, when you go to the install new modules page, you can actually install modules. Which you will be able to do in back in Drupal after what is it? Project browser happens. But I'm going to search for develop sub theme. I'm going to add it to my installation queue, and I'm going to install it. No Drush, no Composer. You can use Drush to do that. There's also three or four different command line tools for Backdrop. There's Backdrush, which is essentially Drush. There's one called B, and I think there's a couple other ones. But they don't have all of the Drush commands that Drupal has. You'll do a Drush command that works in Drupal, and I'll say, this is, command is not available for Backdrop. 
you just kind of have to know. Like watchdog list. I can't view the watchdog in command line. It keeps telling me that I can't do it. Or drush UPS. Can't use that one either. But you can use drush up. They're probably focused more on the B because it's. Um, okay. Yeah. We're probably more focused on this one because it was, it was written specifically for backdrop. Okay. Yeah, it's got a lot of activity. And there are. I have that no, it's in this one. Just as an example. So I installed Devel back to what I was doing. Installed Devel some something. I was trying to show off with this other Lando version how I or other site how I put it in my Lando file to run to run B. But it wasn't it's not loading. So Alright. I'm gonna switch this back to basis, which Basis is the default front end theme for backdrop. My current theme, model aviation backdrop, is actually a sub theme of basis. But you'll note that you'll see this create sub theme link over here. I'm going to create another sub theme of basis. I'll just go ahead and not copy any of that stuff. Of a couple buttons created me a sub created a sub theme, which I could enable and set as the default. And that in my themes folder, I've got Asheville and I've got a CSS folder and info file for the theme. So that was that's a handy tool. That wasn't around when I started messing with backdrop and I tried to make my first sub, sub theme. I actually had to, you know, write code, which is sort of a bad thing in backdrop. <laughs> okay. Another big difference between Drupal and backdrop. Layouts are separate from themes. You can use the the template files from from Drupal if you really want to, but you've got to adapt them because everything uses classes instead of IDs. But you do not need template files. You use the layout feature in Backdrop. And Backdrop layouts were panels in Drupal. So if you used panels in Drupal, you kind of get the gist of layouts. 
the info file on the theme. The D7 info file declares regions. There are no regions in the backdrop info file because it's in the layout system. It's not part of the theme. You don't need any of that stuff. Now we're going to talk about, I'm, I'm going to use all of these modules. Flexible layouts are in core. Mini layouts is a contrib module. CSS editor and CSS injector. I might not use them, but we're going to talk about them. Copy blocks is very important. I use it on every single site that I, use, that I build in Backdrop. And configurable block style, I use in every single site in Backdrop. As well as the develop sub themer that we just talked about. So, why not? Let's look at um, how to adapt the Drupal layout to Backdrop. What can go wrong? Let's look at layouts. Okay, so if you look at Backdrop for the first time you install it, coming from Drupal, you're going to go to Structure and you're not going to see a Blocks item in the menu. You're going to go, how do I put anything on a page? There's no Blocks. But you go to Layouts. When you first install a, a Backdrop site, it comes with two layouts, three layouts. Dashboard, which I don't use, don't look at very often. There's a home page layout and there's a default layout for everything else. Now on this screen you've got list li a layout, layout list. You can install new layouts because there are some contributed layouts in Backdrop Contrib that you can install. It's basically people have created their own flexible layout and then made it a module. And then there's the template page. These are all of the various layouts that you can use for backdrop. The neat part is this one. Add flexible layout template. I'm going to name it And now I get this UI where I can create rows in my layout. So going from this Drupal layout over here, all right, I have a row at the top that I called I want this to be one region, 100% width. I want it to be called top bar. I want it to take the full width of the page. And then I can drag it up to the top above my header. Or maybe I have to drive the t drag the header down. Now, like I've got the, the section with columns, with three columns. So I, want, I need to make um, a three column section. So I'm going to add another row. I'm going to say I want three regions. Then it gives me an interface to say, do I want them all to be equal width? Do I want, I get to choose from all of these widths for the individual regions. And you can change these after the fact. You can edit this. Is there a non-UI way? Like, is there a programmatic way to do this? You could still do it that way, if you want to. Just thinking, like, the projects I have have that are eligible, that would be a good candidate for this, have 20 TPLs, and I don't, the thought of manually making each one sounds horrible. <laughs> there, I've never done that, but there are you can do it that way. Like Eric was just talking about that they didn't use the layout system. They adapted their, t their Drupal templates to work in Backdrop. So that's possible.
I'm just going to save, go ahead and save that because I've already made This was my finished homepage layout that replicated the Drupal site. So I've got my top bar, my header, my top section with my slideshow, my, my three columns, my two columns, my footer with my three columns, and then my footer. And when you're, when you're in these sections, you can, you can style them too and add, add classes to the rows that you can then style in CSS. But it's important to note that if you, add a, if you add a CSS class in the template, that's gonna, like I could reuse this homepage template in other places on the site, but that class is gonna show up everywhere since I put it in the, temp, the, the template for the layout rather than just the layout or the block. So once you make that, then comes the fun part of dropping the content into the correct places. This is sort of like the blocks page in Drupal, but more, more advanced. Because you can reuse blocks everywhere and drag things around. And I mentioned the copy blocks module. If you have 10 templates in your site and you want to have the same header and footer everywhere on the website, you don't want to put the header block on 10 templates. And you don't want to have to change it in 10 places. You want to change it one place. So what copy blocks allows you to do is it also has copy region. So you put your header on your default layout and then copy that region in all of your other templates, in all of your other layouts. The mini layout contrib module is pretty neat as well, but I think I need to talk about this um, layout, the, the copy a little bit more first. So in my header, you'll see something called header mini layout, which is not a block. It's a contributed module called Mini Layout. So the Drupal site had the three section, the three section across the top, and then two underneath it. I found that when I tried to do that, just stacking the blocks on top of one another, it didn't come out right. It looked cruddy, and I had to use some CSS to kind of make it come out halfway correct. But then there were, the mini layouts came to the rescue. It's like layouts within layouts. And you can, you can keep going. And it, it's, it's wild. You could put these inside of one another until you, until you couldn't, you could never stop. So I made a mini layout with another flexible layout of three sections and two sections and dropped my header blocks into that. And then I can drop the mini layout into my default layout and copy that everywhere. So I would edit my my main menu, or no, my social media block, I would edit that here, and then it would show up on all of my layout templates. Mm -hmm. 
questions? How are you, are you pulling, so when you originally did this? Yes. In, in practice rather than the theory, how did you like move all your, all your menus and all your content. The content in the menu, menus come over with the database upgrade. Okay. So you you install the upgrade status module. You look at your Drupal 7 site. You turn off the modules that you don't need. You turn off the modules that don't exist anymore. You export the uh, export the database. You import the database in a backdrop. All your content comes over. Your menus will be there. Your blocks won't be there. You got to manually recreate your blocks. Have you it, done paragraphs? I have not migrated paragraphs, but I have built paragraphs in backdrop pretty extensively. Um, I have this site has that many paragraph types. <laughs> And the neat thing was, I built most of those paragraphs for this site. And I know. I built most of those paragraphs in for the library website. And I just exported the configuration from this website for all those paragraph types and imported them into the Nats website, and they were all there. I didn't have to recreate them. I just imported the config. John? John? Yeah, the layout system, can you show, because I use panels extensively on Drupal 6 and 7. Can you show if it has like context and visibility rules? And it does. Relationships? It does. Let's, um, let's edit this one. Get a sense of is could you make one layout to run your whole simple website and just have block, different blocks have their own visibility settings? You could. Okay. Um, Making it a lot like the block system. This is this is a layout that's specifically for a con single content type. I've got a visibility condition for a content type. Only my magazine issue content type. But if you're actually, if, you, if you're back here on, say, default layout, you could actually control your entire site here because I can configure visibility conditions for specific four blocks. Context module? No, the, no, context module. Um, I, I tried to forget about that. Views? Uh, no, but like, um, so for example, if you tell, if you have a layout that's set up to only display a content type, then you know for certainty that the main, the main object of the page is the node. And so, can you say, all right, I want a relationship to the author of this node? And now that lets me add blocks that are author-related blocks, as opposed to node-specific blocks. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. I've done something like that with. I've done that sort of thing with views, but not necessarily layouts. Yeah, you could do it with. You could. I think you could pull it off with views. Um, I'm just remembering. I did that a bit in panels. I'm just kind of curious how much of panels came to change. There, there are parts that aren't there. Okay. There are definitely parts that aren't there, because. Well, I happen to have Drupal 7 sites that use panels. Yeah, okay. Um, this was one of the migrations that I did from D7 to Backdrop. And this site used, like, everything was powered by panels and views. And there were parts of the panels, the panel configuration in D7 that I couldn't use anymore. I had to change the URLs of the content. Okay. Yeah. 
I think that's the context thing I was talking about, where you have an argument in the URL for the panel. Right? Yep. Yeah. There was there were chained arguments in the URL that that built the URL based upon like the content type, and it it didn't transfer. Okay. Another thing to remember with Drupal 7 to backdrop upgrades that is different from Drupal 9 is that when you do the, the um, database update, you keep your views. If you have a Drupal 7 site with a lot of views, the views will be in backdrop. If you do that upgrade to Drupal 9, they won't be there. You have to manually remake them. Anybody, or have you done any admin themes in Backdrop? No, but that's an interesting question. All of our, we have legacy D7 sites, and they're all on a, a custom version of D7 admin that we made for those sites. Seven moved over, and I used to use adminimal a lot, and that wasn't, that's not in backdrop. I think, uh, I think what we have is based on 7 and, and minimal. I could be wrong. I think the yeah, parts are 7 and parts are minimal. After our, one of the, the discussions in our last Backdrop Live conference was about Claro, about possibly trying to backport it. But I think we ultimately decided that that would be way too difficult. Uh, I don't. I bet it's not that difficult. The fact, I mean, everything theme switching came over, so it's probably make a theme and then like look to see what layout seven has by default, and whatever layout seven has is the layout your thing needs to have to be a working admin thing. It would be my guess. I. Some somewhere I did it as an experimental, just to see what would happen. Like you change the info file so it works with backdrop, and then you can turn it on, and it everything's out of place, and you start playing with the CSS to try to get it to display correctly. Uh, the big difference there is that the Drupal nine theme is using SAS, and we're not using that. For you, it's. It's just CSS. Well, the important part is that you can set it back as the, like, if you made one, you could use it. They just probably aren't important options, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was saying. Like, uh, my guess is it's the same amount of effort to bring over an admin thing as it would be to bring over a regular front end thing. Because people kind of just, Basically the same thing. Yeah, they're the admin things and the regular things are the same thing. They just might have different regions. And that's why I was talking about like, go see what region 7 has, or layouts 7 has, and then you'll, that'll probably tell you everything. You well, it, it doesn't, the specific theme doesn't really have a layout. Like there's, there's a default administrative layout, which is boxed in. Yeah. Another difference between Backdrop and Drupal is that this is more WordPress e because you when you go to the WordPress um, dashboard, you get all of this information on that page about the larger WordPress community. And this is the this is the page that you land on after you log in to Backdrop. And I realized that I didn't talk about CSS editor or CSS injector. Um, CSS editor is kind of neat because you can edit. It adds a WYSI, oh, I'm on the wrong side, no wonder.
If you didn't want to um, theme your colors in your site, you could use the color module in here to alter all of the colors, just in the UI. And if you install the CSS editor module, it gives you this custom CSS spot on your theme administration page, which also looks a whole lot like the customizer in WordPress and kind of works this similar because you can just put CSS right there and not ever have to touch the CSS file in your code. And it gives you a nice preview of what it's going to look like. Although I wish that was over on the right hand side using more of the screen rather than just in the sidebar. It's much more possible to, with Backdrop to do things in the UI and not ever touch code, as opposed to Drupal. Any other questions? Honestly, when I changed one of the sites, they didn't even notice. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the configuration management is much like Drupal. You can do single imports, exports in here. Difference being, you can. They don't have to be within the same site. So what, this is probably time for us to go, but what about like, features? Ah, if you have a Drupal 7 site with features, I've had some of those. There, you have to get it out of code and back into the database before you do the, the upgrade. There's actually a Drupal module called Unfeatureize <laughs> that helps you out with all that stuff. And I had any difficulty with that working. After I unfeatureized something in Drupal 7 and then ran the upgrade, and it, it all worked. Very curious about this. Because I'm like, oh, I got some work to do when I get that. It's pretty cool when you get into it. Like, I couldn't have imagined three years ago that I would be as into the backdrop community as I am. I, I mentioned that we were moving the library website to backdrop at Florida Drupal Camp right before COVID in 2020. And someone, in, someone said to me, well, you're probably going to be to a point where you're going to be maintaining modules and stuff. And I'm like, really? And now I am. <laughs> Like I said in the other class, in the other class, like there's a whole world of poor D7 website owners that are scrambling, and we still have to do those. This is exciting to know there is at least maybe a way forward for them. And Eric, Eric was talking about the community. Yes, it is smaller, but the people who are into this are really into this. Like we have. We have our own open source Slack, which is called Zulip. And there are people on here from all over the world, all hours of the day, helping each other. 